and welcome to Lex Education, the brand new podcast from comedian, author, star of Live at the Apollo, Mock the Week, Hypothetical and Roast Battle, Laura Lex, and her brother Ron. Hello, I'm Ron. In our brand new podcast adventure, science fan Ron tries to teach me, comedy queen Laura, enough science to pass a triple GCSE, with limited success. Each week, Ron and I will focus on one of the different science topics, alternating between biology, chemistry and physics. Each episode will feature one lesson and one quiz. However, the twist is that even though you will just hear a jingle between the lesson and the quiz, we will have lived a whole week in the real world. That way we really see what's stuck in my brain. Quite often for lunch, I just make my own mushy peas and have them with carrots. Might leave that in as the start of the podcast, to be honest. <laughs> Hello, Ron. It's episode three. It's it's a magic number. It's physics. Now, listen, we know that you're here for um lovely, pure science content. There is a smut warning on today's show. Ron is going to tell us some facts about bulgur wheat and <laughs> that joke is going to resurface. So just listen, if there's a I believe a smut... it was lentils. Uh, I, I think it was bulgur wheat, Ron. I believe it was definitely bulgur wheat, because now I can't look at bulgur wheat anymore. Sound off in the comments about what smells more like cum. <laughs> so yeah, today we, we're going to hit up some physics. We're going to have a look at... um, uh, Our lady has to throw a ball. We're going to find out what's going on. <laughs> Listen, we kind of need your help on physics, because as you'll hear in the episode, we both, so, well, I mainly think it's garbage. Um, so if you've got any fun ideas for how physics can be more interesting, maybe you're a physics teacher and you teach this to children, hey, let us know. You can contact us on all the socials, Instagram, uh, t- TikTok, Twitter, Facebook. We're Lex Education. Find the one you like best and come and chat to us there. Uh, or you can email us at lexeducation at gmail.com. We also want to do a massive shout out to Podspike. If you heard the last two episodes, you, you'll have heard us mention them before. If you didn't hear the last two episodes, how did you get here? But welcome anyway. We're not sad about it. Um, Podspike really helped us launch this podcast, um, especially with doing the fiddly things that neither of us are great at, like helping us choose a podcast distribution app and how to hook that up to all the other distribution apps. That didn't mean much to us a couple of months ago. We just wanted to talk to each other about science, and Podspike really showed us how to get that into people's phones. So if you have any ideas about launching a podcast, but just think, I don't even know how to do most of that, talk to Podspike, because they have been brilliant with us. We cannot recommend them enough. Agreed. Ron, how are you this week? I'm doing really well this week. I finally nailed the working from home lunch. Ooh, what do you have? A bulgur wheat and lentil salad that I just make a massive bowl of at the beginning of the week and then just scoop some each day. It's brilliant. Hmm, sounds disgusting, but I'm pleased for you. Oh, no, no, it's great, right? Sort of equal parts bulgur wheat and green lentils. And then as much fresh veg as you want in there. A bit of tomato passata, red wine vinegar, basil, and then a bit of salt and pepper. Perfect. All right. Um, The only problem is that I've been informed that the smell of cooking lentils smells horrifically like cum. Um, Oh, no. (laughs) We've had to (laughs) buy a candle. (laughs) <laughs> when, when I make lentils. Well, I hate that information. I hate it, Ron. I really hate it. Hey, last week's episode was good, huh? Today we're moving on to physics. So, um, which I feel like physics is the is the worst one because it's the least good one. Yeah, physics is the shittest, to be fair. It's also the mathsiest one, um, so it's going to be the hardest to translate into a podcast format. Oh. Um, Let's get into it, shall we? Ron, what are we covering in today's lesson? We're going to be talking about the basics of energy, what that means, the different types of it, and how they interplay, basically. I remember two things about energy – the word kinetic and potential. 
Perfect. Those are two of the big ones. Yeah, brilliant. I've remembered those. Okay, so in the syllabus, it, um, it first tells us a little bit about the history of energy. Um, it says that the concept of energy emerged in the 19th century, which I flat out don't believe. Um, <laughs> uh, but I imagine they mean kind of energy in the sense that we understand it now. Um, and apparently it was developed um, to explain the work output of steam engines and then generalised to understand other heat engines. So... Um, kind of just uh, capitalism driving everything towards more efficiency, really. Woohoo! We love capitalism and unions! Yay! And then I feel like um, whoever writes the syllabus um, just throwing in a bit of their agenda because they then they say limits to the use of fossil fuels and global warming are critical problems for this century. Physicists and engineers are working hard to identify ways to reduce our energy usage. It's not mentioned again, but they just wanted to get it in there. Brilliant. It's good to know. It's reassuring. So Maybe once I've part- learned this, I'll be able to help with the climate crisis. Potentially, yes. Um, Kinetically, so, yes. So I've <laughs> the words kinetic <laughs> and potential. <laughs> what else could you tell me about energy in general? Uh, let me see. Uh, I know energy can't be destroyed. It can only be transferred. Yeah. So, um, like, you know, when something goes cold, it's not that uh, energy has been destroyed or died or anything. It's that it's either gone into other things or become wind or something like that. Um, I know that there's the different types of energy. Like, what I vaguely remember is, like, potential energy is, like, if a ball is at the top of a hill... Or an elastic band is real stretched. It's got potential energy, like, stored up in it. Yeah. Kinetic is something to do with movement, I think. Yeah. So that's actually my next question. So there are, um, I found, nine different types of energy. You've said two of them. Could you hazard a guess at the other ones? Seven more? Oh, you'll be lucky. Um, Electrical? Yes. Ooh, okay. Uh, I assume, like, heat energy? Absolutely. What's the one that kind of goes hand in hand with heat? Cold. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> Light. Yes. Light energy. Um, okay, the other three are a little bit more obscure, but, is like, there like a digesting very common day. energy? A what, sorry? Me- like, metabolism energy, like... You know, when you break something down and it gets you energy from your food. Uh, well, you've already named the type of energy that that is. What? What? So that would be. Metabolic. So you're talking about us get. No, uh, one that you've already mentioned. Um, out of this list. Potential. So if you. No, let me let me finish my. Sugar. Sentence. Um, so you're talking about getting the energy out of the the food. Mm-hmm. Food is made of what? Atoms. Cells. <laughs> it's made of, like, you know... Um, Cells. Uh, molecules. Molecules. Gubbits. <laughs> okay. So if you're, if you're getting the energy from these molecules, what type of energy do you think is in those? Out of the ones that you've already mentioned. Potential? No, no because you don't put your food up on the top of a hill <laughs> and then nibble it down to the bottom. <laughs> Stored up energy. What's a name for stored up energy? Uh, sh- so that's that's an example of chemical energy. Cause I didn't the, say chemical the- energy yet, though. Oh fuck! No, you said electrical. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> oh, so that's chemical energy. Got ya. Um, okay, chemical. Okay, so there's actually one. there are actually three more because I thought you'd already said that. Oh damn. So. Think about podcasts. Audio podcasts energy. Podcasts are sound energy. Yeah, that's a thing. Okay. Okay. Um, think about the last episode that we did. Frustration and energy. No, that's <laughs> that, that's all heat. Um, micro energy. No, so we were talking about magnetic energy. That is one, not what I was alluding to, oh, but good job. Okay, well that's good. Um, so last, last week we, we were talking about... about atoms. Yeah, atomic energy. 
Split kind the of. Atom. What's the... Split the atom. Yeah. Oh, nuclear yeah. energy. Yes, that's that's yes. the that's kind of what we call it. Yes. We've already had some good fun with uh, <laughs> trying to work out what type of energy is in food. Um, so it says students should be able to describe all the changes involved in the way energy is stored when a system changes for common situations. All right. For example, an object getting projected upwards and stuff like that. All right. So let's jump into the first one and we'll work through that. Yeah. So let an object getting projected upwards. So let's say... By projected, uh, a, do you mean thrown? Yeah. So I was going to say, so let's say a woman throws a ball... Thanks for making it a woman, Ron. That's really good of you. Oh, well. Okay, she's throwing a ball right up in the air. Before she throws it, where is that energy? In her arm. In the form of? Muscles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what kind of energy do you think muscles use? Hmm... Let me have a look at my little list. You'd hope it's not nuclear. Could be chemical if she's on the Russian Olympic team. Probably not magnets Ayo. or electrical unless she's a robot. So heat is a... She has got heat in her body. And it is hard to be energetic when you're cold. She's probably not glowing, so I doubt it's light. I mean, I do make noises when I throw stuff like... Helps me throw things further, <laughs> but I feel like that's not science. Potential feels very likely to me, like when you flex a muscle and a muscle is poised, it's full of potential energy. And kinetic is about moving, so moving. So, potential energy? Not quite. So, work it back a little bit. So, actually, we've talked about this. Um, in the first episode so obviously muscles yeah they're like the pistons that will move her arm mm -hmm. but how do they power themselves where where do humans in general get their energy from the sun all right a step after that <laughs> <laughs> I, hate, I hate those silences where you're breathing in <laughs> <laughs> no, that was more frustration at myself because I kept on saying, work it back, work it back. And like, you're technically fucking right, which is quite frustrating. <laughs> but that's all right. I, you know, OK, so photons coming out the sun. Then what do the photons where does. All right, let's work it all the way back. OK, so oh, God. energy leaves the sun. <laughs> yeah. Vitamin Lands D. On, no, back no. back again, back again. Okay, back um, to the sun. Energy leaves the sun. <laughs> yeah. Lands on a plant. Let's say yep. lands on some cabbage. Okay. Yep. And then right. photosynthesis happens. Yep. The cabbage grows. A human. Cabbage then grows. Eats the cabbage grows. Let it. Don't no. Don't. Eric Clapton's cancelled. Well cancelled. Let's not sing about him. Um, I wasn't. I was singing about a cabbage. Um, I'm not going to pay yeah, so him any royalties. Certainly not. Um, although um, it does support your anti-vax agenda. Um, <laughs> so human eats the cabbage. Yeah, Ugh, poor human. And she's got to throw a ball. She is having the worst day ever. So, so I guess then chemical. Yes. <laughs> You remember our old friend ATP from the first episode? I do. Ah, and with inflation, he's now known as two pound fifty. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so ATP we remember is the is the energy currency of the cell. Yes, that is just chemical energy. The energy is all held within that chemical, and muscles go through shed loads of it whenever they do anything. That's why you burn so much energy when, when you're exercising and stuff. So, okay, so she, using the muscles in her arm, she mm -hmm. converts that chemical energy into... Kinetic energy. Absolutely, yes. So she is converting chemical energy into kinetic energy, which she is then passing into the ball. 
yep. which she then throws upwards. So there's now so, like a bit um, of cabbage bonus, in the ball. Kind of, yeah. Whoa. So, um, I mean, bonus points if you can think of um, maybe another two types of energy that might have been created while she was, like, you know, through the action of moving her arm. Well, you, you I mentioned would one of them earlier. Heat, because movement creates friction, which is heat. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, so yeah, definitely heat energy. So not just from friction, obviously a little bit from friction, but also just all of these ATP molecule, molecules, they're all releasing energy. Not all of that is going to get captured and used by the muscle. So some of it is just going to become heat and it will heat up the system. Let's say that, you know, she's well quick at throwing a ball. So her arm, like, you know, cuts through the air really quickly. Yeah. Might make a noise. Yeah, I was going to say that. I was going to say it's a bit of sound energy. Yeah, I think probably that's it. So at at the top of its peak of the throw, what energy does the ball have? Potential. Yeah. So at the very top, let's we're, we're talking about her throwing it directly up above her head. So at the very top, the ball has converted all of its energy into potential energy. Mm -hmm. Then what do you think happens? Gravity. Yep, pulls it back down and... And... Energy changes. Where, what does the potential energy then do? I guess it changes back into kinetic energy. Exactly, yeah. Because it's then going to punch the ground. Yeah, exactly. So then... I mean, um, excellent segue. So the next um, situation on the list is a moving object hitting an obstacle. So, so there will be um, some kinetic energy shift because the ground, like p- some things on the floor will move when the ball hits it. Like if a pebble bounces or something, that's transfer of kinetic energy. Yep, absolutely. Might be heat energy. A, I would imagine a small amount of heat would be produced. And sound, yeah. definitely sound. A ball bouncing makes a sound. So quite a lot of sound energy. Yep, yeah, well, yeah, if it was like... But you like know, vibrations anything... and sound, I guess, would be the two most notable. Yeah, so I think... And it bounces um, back up. So the ball keeps the energy but goes back the other way. Yeah, so if we're imagining a bouncy ball, every time... And, I mean, we've all thrown bouncy balls. We've they, all thrown bouncy balls. Who on men, planet Earth has women, thrown a bouncy everyone. ball? We love throwing bouncy balls. But every time it bounces, it doesn't go quite as high. Yeah. That is because each time it bounces, and, you know, all the ways it's arcing through the air and whatnot, it is losing energy. Yeah. Yep, careless little ball. shuffling around you're very noisy in there i was shuffling around yes yeah, you noisy little boy you are making too much sound energy stop converting your bulgur wheat into sound energy please hooray i feel like you're getting better at learning you know mm, maybe you've just caught me on a good day <laughs> maybe this just makes um, sense, though, because this is actual stuff. No offence, Ron, I know that you love it, but all that stuff about cells is so pointless. Like, it means absolutely nothing in real terms. So at least this is like, yeah, I know what movement looks like, where I don't, I don't, I've never even seen a plum pudding, let alone a proton. You... Need to stop using our podcast to push your anti-vax agenda. <laughs> stop telling people I'm an anti. I'm vaxxed. I couldn't be more vaxxed. Yeah, you can fit you say, another vaccine in this tight little body. If you say that like these things don't matter, then it's just the logical conclusion. And I feel like you've started this podcast to then just you know like a frog in boiling water, people. <laughs> <laughs> They'll start and they're like, oh, cool, I'm going to learn a bit of GCSE um, stuff. And then later on, you just get them with it. Look, babe, we can either do a science podcast that's cool and make no money, or I can slowly Joe Rogan this shit and we'll be millionaires. Which one do you want? Yeah, a bit of both, to be fair, so I'm a common A. <laughs> 
Right, okay, next one um, is... A vehicle slowing down. Start from wherever you want. Excuse me, what is the question? <laughs> so, you know this thing that we've been doing for the last 20 minutes? <laughs> yes. So, energy transfers oh, okay. when a vehicle <laughs> slows down. <laughs> You're right, I have got better at learning. Uh, <laughs> a vehicle is slowing down. Mm -hmm. So, you are changing kinetic energy into heat energy. <laughs> uh, I guess it's heat and the sound, definitely, like if you apply a brake. Especially my car, man, it needs a service. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. The the tires and the brakes and and everything they get they get very hot when when a when a vehicle slows down. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, easy one. Okay. Um, next one. Bringing water to a boil in an electric kettle. So we're going from electricity, and that is being turned into. Heat and sound and so let's let's not jump a step. So the filament in the kettle is electricity is going through it. That electrical energy is getting transformed into heat. Yeah. And then the heat from the filament gets passed into the water, which then yeah. heats up. Then what happens? Well, the water starts moving, so it becomes kinetic energy too, yeah. and. Maybe chemical energy because you get bubbles? Um, not really. The bubbles come from cavitation as the water turns into steam, which is, uh, yeah, just heat and kinetic energy. Uh, that's not chemical. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I would say heat, sound, and kinetic. Yeah, cool. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, I feel like I've got okay. that. So where are we going next? Okay, so now, um, because physics is the most mathsy of, um, of the three sciences that, that we're looking Yuck. at, we're going to learn how to calculate a couple of different energies. Okay? Sure, sounds real useful. Let's do it. Okay, so the first one, your, your friend of mine, kinetic energy. I like that um, one. Yeah, kinetic energy is good. It's easy to understand. So energy in... Um, do you know what SI units are? No. Nope. Um, so SI units, that stands for the International Standard Unit. Um, so basically, um, you know how America and the UK, we hang on to things like inches and miles and stuff and like white that. And white power. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, and then, um, you know, it's very most hard to do a podcast with you because all my jokes fall very flat, Ron. <sighs> but it's not a comedy podcast, it's educational. <laughs> well, why am I here then? <laughs> to learn. Oh. <laughs> because you fucked it the first time round. Oh, come um, on, man. Yeah, so, um, and then most sensible places in the world have gone metric, metres, um, you know, uh, kilograms yeah. and, and stuff, uh, millilitres. Those cucks. So, <laughs> those beta males that use the, the decimal system. The, for, for everything that there needs to be a unit, there is kind of the metric of that, which is the SI unit system. So, so the, the, the SI unit for energy is joules. Um, rather than the other ones that, um, you know, you see other way, uh, in other places, is like calories. Calories is just a different uh, unit for energy. A joule is um, defined as... A ruby uh, or a sapphire or a diamond or an emerald or a garnet or topaz, aquamarine, amethyst... Someone watched too much of the shopping channels. <laughs> In um, genuine lapis lazuli, measuring just over a centimetre, an exact replica 
Of those one by the I just that remember from? watching that and just being horrified by um their their hands. Yeah. Something something really off about someone's hands that are just too manicured. <laughs> um yeah, it's equal to the work done by a force of one newton acting through one meter. What are you talking about, Ron? So the cool thing about SI units is that they are all linked together, right? You are bandying about the word cool here. <laughs> You're the one making a science podcast. Um, you approached me. Um, <laughs> yes. <yeah, so laughs> they're, they're all linked together. Um, do you know where the Look, ground you know, comes You know from? the answer is no, Ron. You know that I don't know that. Yes, but it can't just be a lecture because I'm, I'm sorely underqualified to give one. <laughs> okay, then. Let me have a think. The gram. Hmm. Do you know, it slipped my memory as to where the gram was invented. I'm going to guess Sheffield. Um, I'm not sure, actually. But the point that I'm trying to make... so. Um, a gram, a centimetre and a millilitre are all based Walk off, into a bar uh, and the barman says, you guys are tiny. Shut up, we're actually standard. Uh, no, so a millilitre, a gram and a centimetre are all linked around water. So one millilitre of water, if you put it into a cube, that cube would be a centimetre squared and that cube of water would weigh a gram. Okay. Pretty cool, right? A centimetre squared is quite big. Do you mean a millimetre squared? No. The the unit for energy, joules, is um, one, um, one it unit It sounds like it of... shouldn't be called joules. Joules sounds like a mate you've got that's, like, really nice, you know? Like, oh, joules will help you out. It's too informal. Oh, uh, that... No... For me, it sounds like, oh, he's having a unit hootenanny down at, on New Year's. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, the, the unit of energy is equal to one of the unit of force, which is a Newton, named after Sir Isaac Newton, acting through one of the standard unit of distance, which is a metre. What? A, a, unit, <laughs> a unit and a Newton and a metre, they're the same. The unit, the, the standard <laughs> unit for energy... Yeah, is a joule. Yes, which is equal to one newton acting through one metre. What is a newton? It's the standard unit of force. What do you mean the standard unit of force? Because we're talking about the standard units. Yeah, but how do you have a standard force? What do you mean? Because force is a measurable thing. Uh, sure. What? Is it? Yeah. Like gravitational force. Like we can measure that. The the pull of gravity. Or like if you lent on a door, you'd be applying a force to that door and we can measure that. Okay. It and would one be single so many measure Newtons. of force is a Newton. Yes, exactly. So one Newton. And then if you pushed something uh, with one Newton's worth of force, one metre... Mm-hmm. That would be one joule. Of energy. Yes. Okay. Because they're right. all interlinked. Okay, so the formula um, for working out the kinetic energy of something is you take half the mass and you multiply that by the speed squared. Let's say we had... Um, uh, a baby the baby weighs what do babies weigh like 10 pounds no in kilograms what did we just talk about nobody measures babies in kilograms no one's ever <laughs> measured a baby in a kilogram and I'll die on this hill that is sick and wrong if you've had a baby and someone says how much does it weigh and you tell me in kilograms I'm staring at you with absolutely no idea how big your baby is or how broken your body is 
That is ridiculous. Don't choose I mean, a baby I, if you want to measure something in kilograms. I hesitate. Or like, I, I do hate to agree with you, but I do. I have no idea how much babies weigh in kilograms. So let's just well, say like this Mackie baby... Well, like, Mackie weighs 4.6 kilograms. So how about right, we do okay. it with Mackie? Yeah, let's do it with Mackie. Okay, so we take Mackie half the mass. Do- so 2.3 kilograms. Know. Hang on, is weight the same as mass? <laughs> For our purposes, yes. Okay, so what is creaking? Is it your chair? It's very noisy. You're a noisy little boy. (laughs) Sit still. Stop clenching your bum cheeks. Ron, when he was little, and he we didn't have enough car seats, so it was the nineties. It was fine, but Ron just sat on one of our laps in the back, and he would clench his bum cheeks on purpose to just be gross and have them dig into your thighs. He was a horrid little boy, and he still is. Okay. No, so. that's not that's not entirely true. I'd clench my bum cheeks at first because I was a small child flying about like I was in a washing machine <laughs> because I was just sat on someone's lap, not strapped into the seat. So sometimes I clench just to get a bit of purchase, try and grip a knee. <laughs> then you guys started complaining about it a lot. So then I did start clenching just to annoy you. <laughs> Horrible little boy. Okay, so... T- 2.3 so, kilograms of Mackey multiplied yeah. by... By the speed squared. So we need to do the speed in metres per second. So I've got to drop her now. What? What are we doing? <laughs> I thought we... <laughs> how, asked, how do we find out how fast she's going? <laughs> well, not which, well, we don't have to drop her. <laughs> well, where's she moving? Is she just running? <laughs> is this just running? <laughs> she, she can move however you want. If you want to drop her off something, I think that that's that's on you. That says more I don't about want you than to drop her, and I'm not doing it. I don't care about this podcast enough to throw my dog off something. <laughs> so, oh, so just the speed that she's running at is fine. Kinetic energy in any direction, yes. All right. So how fast does she run? Probably 10 metres per second. Okay, and we've got to square that. Yes. So 10 square metres per second. I can't see your face, so I don't know if you're joking, but I'm looking very sternly at my mic. <laughs> so I think not you know that's that. not right. It'd be no. fun if you could suddenly run in 3D, though. <laughs> What do you mean? Of course you can run in 3D. <laughs> no, you can only really run like linear. What if you ran up a hill? Still a line, isn't it? Because you're what not you running along both hill? axes at the same time. If you ran wiggly up a hill, you're running in 3D. No. Um, <laughs> so 10... Meters per second squared. What's the square? Is that ten by ten? So is that a hundred meters per second? Yes, yes, it is. So two point three kilograms times a hundred meters per second. Well, just times a hundred. Just times a hundred. Just times a hundred. Yep. So two hundred and thirty kilograms. No. No. We're working out the energy. Two hundred and thirty joules. Yes, 230 hootenannies so barreling what that... down the park. So that's how much energy Mackie burns? No, that's how much energy she has. So like, think about the, the ball that the, that the very athletic woman threw upwards. The, the ball has that energy. And Mackie has that energy when she runs. Okay. But she might have more, she's just not using it. She she has loads of energy in her body. Yeah, she. Fun. That's just the that's the amount of kinetic energy she has at any one point. And then if she runs up a hill, she'll then gain potential energy, which she could then use to roll back down the hill or something like that. <laughs> and she'll be heating up, so she'll have more heat energy in her. Yeah. So that's fine. I can remember that that is a maths thing. But... But... But why? What? 
Is that just because we were like, hey, a jewel's got to be a thing? It basically says that the speed of something it has an exponential relationship with the amount of energy that it has, whereas the mass is just linear. So if you, if you take an object, no matter what object, so let's say there's a, there's a 10 kilogram ball mm-hmm. and there's a 20 kilogram ball. If they're both moving at the same speed, then the 20 kilogram ball has twice the kinetic energy of the 10 kilogram ball. However, if we have two balls of the same mass, but one is going at um, 10 meters per second, but the other one's going at 20 meters per second, we know that the, the one that's going at 20 meters per second has four times the kinetic energy of the other one because the speed is squared. Does that make <laughs> sense? Sure. Let's say it does. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> so I think, I think this stuff next like this just bends my brain a bit because I'm like, like a jewel isn't really a thing, is it? It's just a number we needed to give to something to make it easier for us to understand it. It's not a real thing. You can't count the jewels. Well, you absolutely could. What, you could cut something open and get the jewels out of them? No, but we could transfer that energy into a different kind of energy. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you absolutely can count the jewels. So let's say, for example, um, you know, uh, let's, let's use Mackie again. So Mackie's running. Um, we want to work out how many jewels are in her. We know how much she weighs. She weighs 4.6 kilograms. We don't know, um, upon looking at her, exactly how how quickly she's moving but we could work that out really easily with just a tape measure and a stopwatch Mm -hmm. so we can work out how quickly she runs and then using this very very simple equation we know how much kinetic energy she has when she moves yeah but it's not real so it does it they're not things but what if we discussed it in a like in a more sort of consequential um example so let's say let's let's talk about a car you and i were in a car accident together only what like eight months ago um so we if we can work out the kinetic energy of a car we know how much energy is then gonna you know be oh okay car crashes into something and we know how strong we need to make seat belts and airbags and we know um you know how like how much we need to make the crumple zones crumple and, and that sort of thing yeah all right okay that makes sense i like that so should cars have different speed limits depending on how big they are um, you know, when that advert where the little girl's like, if you hit me at 30, I might survive. That's not necessarily true if you're driving a big car. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is true. I, I, I mean, if we're actually talking about if we wanted to adjust policy, I don't think different speed limits is necessarily necessary. But it's just if you're in a bigger car because you have more kinetic energy, obviously you need to leave a much bigger space in between you and the next car. Yeah. All right, okay, I like that. Thank you for explaining it like that. Now it feels less like a, what's the point? Okay, the next one is going to feel a lot more, what's the point? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Because the next one that we're going to discuss is elastic potential energy. So potential energy is one of your favourites. Mm-hmm, big fan. We're going to learn how to calculate two different potential energies, elastic and gravitational. So elastic, you'll... And then this is, this is one of the things that I really like about um, physics is how the same kind of patterns pop up. So obviously the, the equation we just learned for kinetic energy, half times mass times speed squared. The equation for elastic potential is half times the spring constant, we'll come on to that in a second, times the extension of the spring squared. So you see it's like the same pattern, but just with different uh, variables. 
Okay. So the spring constant, and I think this is why this is going to annoy you, and we might move on from elastic potential quickly. <laughs> the spring constant literally just describes how hard it is to pull the spring or the elastic band or something. Okay, so how much resistance is in the elastic? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Half um, that. And, and how, then, what do you measure that in? Um, that's a good is that question. in newtons? Because it's force. I was Googling that before we started. So it's Hooke's Law. Um, Newton meters or kilograms per... Uh, newtons per meter or kilograms per second squared, apparently. Newtons per meter or kilograms... Let's just go with newtons per meter. So how, many, how much meter. force do you need to extend that spring a meter? Yeah, okay. Um, and then we're going to multiply that by the extension squared. Times how far you stretched it squared. Exactly, yeah. So if we... So is that in millimetres? That uh, metres is the, the SI unit for, for distance. Okay. So if we were going to talk about maybe um, a, a bungee jumper... So I, I have not a scooby-doo on what the spring constant of a bungee would be, but let's say it's 100 newtons per metre. Mm-hmm. And then if it extends by 50 metres, so that's uh, 2,500 when it's squared. So we times that by 100, half it, and then that would be the elastic potential of the bungee cord. And we'd want to know that because we want to know that th- how far back up the spring is going to ping so we don't smash into a bridge. Exactly, yep. Or even say it had too loose a spring constant. Um, you know, we don't want the person to just keep on stretching the bungee and just hit the floor. Yeah, okay. All right. I like things because... much more when they have a use. Yeah, and not just Mackie dicking around. That makes sense. <laughs> well, it makes sense now. I'm like, oh, I shouldn't let her run too fast if she's heading for a wall. Exactly. We should slow our dogs down. <laughs> um, so then the last one is um, gravitational potential energy. Um, mm-hmm. And this one's the easiest one, basically. Um, so it is how heavy the thing that you've got is. How high up you, uh, how high up you've put it, and how strong the gravitational field is. So um, heavy and height, gravity. Yep, and you just multiply the three of those together. So mass times height times gravitational field strength. So off the top of my head, I think the gravitational field strength, uh, field strength, is nine point eight five or something for the mm. Earth. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, um, <laughs> so I mean, practical uses for this would be, uh, <laughs> uh, God, when is when is gravitational? Um, I mean, well, is this of, like you know when they say if you drop a penny off the Empire State Building, it could kill someone? Yes, is yeah. When people lie about that, they are referring to things like this. Yeah, that um, is because like a that... thing because a penny isn't much, but because it's very light, but it's coming from a big height, so that changes yeah. the energy it's got in it. Yeah, exactly. So if you took it up the Empire State Building, um, hey, oh, she took it up the Empire State, mate. Ooh, saucy. Um... <laughs> Saucy! Smells like lentils in here. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, so, I mean, I'm pretty sure Mythbusters disproved that. But God, you used to love Mythbusters. Who didn't used to love Mythbusters? (laughs) I mean, I, I assume a lot of people, otherwise it would still be on telly, but you loved it, didn't you? Mythbusters was great, although it was one of the sad... Uh, one of the things that I hate learning about is when people that you sort of see on screen and stuff aren't as good mates as you think. So yeah. like the, the two guys from Mythbusters fucking despise each other. Oh, really? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, like um, Flight of the Concords, they don't get on. 
No, I knew that, yeah. Wait yeah. till people find out we're not brother and sister. Yeah, well, we are, but we just hate each other. We hate each other. We're just doing it for all the sweet podcast money. <laughs> um, yeah, Mythbusters disproved it, but what I imagine the person that first put that about might have been saying is that the energy in a penny when you take it up to the um, top of the Empire State Building is enough to kill a person. Yeah, and then those that's the three that they want you to learn, basically. So Yeah, all right. And I definitely know those now forever. So Yeah. I think the most interesting part of that is the way that the equations sort of interplay with each other and the stuff about the units because um uh, I like the bit with the dog. Right. Um yeah, that's um that's the end of um of today's class. Um I'll see you next week for the quiz then. All right. I will be revising constantly. It is one week later here in the land of the world. Uh, Although for listening, it's like magic. It's just happening. There's a tiny sting and then you're here. Time travel. Um, Ron, you're going to test me now on energy. Yes, this should be a fun one. Mm -hmm. Okay, how many questions are we talking? We're we're only doing three questions, but there are... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... 15 points available? 14 points available. 14 points total across three questions. Okay, here we go. Question number one. Wait, no, I can't count. 17 points total. Oh, Lord. I don't stand a chance. Okay, what are the different types of energy? Okay, we've got... Electrical. Bing. Magnetic. Bing. Nuclear. Bing. Kinetic. Bing. Potential. Bing. Chemical. Bing. Three more. Light. Bing. Sound. Bing. One more. And gravitational. Gravitational is um, is, is part of potential. Ah, dang. All right, what is the ninth one? Heat. Heat. Yeah. yeah, okay. One well, of the biggies. not bad, though. Eight out of nine. I'm happy with that. No, damn good, bloody good, damn good work that was. Damn good, uh, bloody good, damn good work. Thank you. Okay, um, what is the unit of energy? A joule. Yes, a joule. Um, a joule? Just like mum's jumpers. Um, okay, right. The next one is um, a bit more, is less of a um, tick the box, get the right answer kind of question. What are the energy changes of someone pulling back a bow and firing an arrow into a target? Okay, so first of all, you are transferring chemical light, like heat energy, into a muscle moving, which is kinetic energy. Then, okay, and you're pulling the arrow and the bow, so that's kinetic energy. Then there's potential energy stored in the bow, and then when you let go, you you turn that into kinetic energy and sound energy and probably some heat energy at the friction as it goes through the air. I suppose the arrow has potential energy while it's flying too. And then when the arrow thunks Mm. into something, it makes sound energy and vibrations go through the earth and split the earth. So kinetic energy. Yes, good. Um, Very close. That was, um, I counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points for that. So I got 17. Yeah, I think it was actually out of 18. (laughs) So there were nine points available if you got the nine types of energy. One point for jewels. And then how many points were available for question three? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it was 18 total. So I only missed out two whole points. 
you missed out heat energy, um, and you missed out. Did I miss out heat energy? Oh, at the beginning. Yeah, at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and then you missed out heat uh, when the arrow hits the target. Oh yeah, okay. Um, and then um, the the only wrong thing that I think you said there was um, well you well you said the arrow has potential energy, which technically it does when it's flying through the air because it's not on the ground, but that was not transferred into it in the act of firing it, assuming you fired it flat, if you see what I mean, because it already had it when it was in the bow. But what if I picked it up off the floor to fire it? Um, then that's not the question. <laughs> All right, well, I'm happy with that. That's fine by me. Um, let us know what you scored. We're on Twitter and Instagram at Lex Education. Uh, and if you want to question any of Ron's teaching methods or facts, email us at lexeducation at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back next week when we are back to biology. Ooh. Which is Ron's favourite. Look at his little monkey face lighting up. Ooh, he's a cutie. Uh, thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Class dismissed. Class <laughs> dismissed.